Today is the 13th of April 2022. My name is David Hickson and in today's market update we're going to be taking a look at the S&P 500 and the Nasdaq. In particular we're going to be discussing cycle shapes which is one of my favorite subjects when it comes to discussing Hearst cycles and the way that they influence the price movements of financial markets. Before we do that I must ask you to please make sure that you have read and understood these disclaimers. So let's start our discussion this week by taking a look at the NASDAQ and let me display the semicircles on this particular analysis. The reason that I'm starting with the NASDAQ is because as I have discussed in previous market update videos, the NASDAQ is interesting because of the lower trough that was formed in December of 2018 which means that the March 2020 trough, which is often referred to nowadays as the pandemic trough, or it was a trough that formed at about the time that the world was uh, first reeling from the fact that the pandemic was spreading around the world. Um, so that trough was not a lower price level in the NASDAQ, which means that the analysis you see in front of you is the more obvious or more natural analysis for the NASDAQ. In the S&P 500, of course, the bigger magnitude trough is currently positioned in March of 2020. I've discussed this in previous market update videos. The important thing about this analysis is that, as you know, there are three 18-month cycles within every 54-month cycle. And the uh, important thing about this analysis is that it indicates that we might be in the third 18-month cycle whether that 18-month cycle trough formed recently at the beginning of March or whether it formed in October, uh, as I've discussed in previous market update videos, the important thing is that this is the third 18-month cycle or is possibly the third 18-month cycle. And the third 18-month cycle should, of course, be the most bearish. And the reason for that is simply because price has to come down into this 54-month cycle trough, which in the NASDAQ is expected over here, as you can see, towards the end or uh, late in 2023. And so that is something that we have to keep at the back of our minds. That this is a potential analysis, not only in the NASDAQ, but also in the other uh, stock markets around the world. Although there is the more prominent trough in March of 2020 in the other stock markets, we need to bear in mind the possibility that the news of the pandemic caused extra volatility and therefore distorted some of the cycle shapes in the markets. I know there are many analysts that disagree with me about this, but I like to keep these kinds of ideas in the back of my mind when I'm performing an analysis, because I think it would be foolish to turn a blind eye to this possibility which is that we are now entering a bearish phase, as is demonstrated quite simply by this semicircle for the 54-month cycle, indicating that, of course, the 54-month cycle is turning down, and so we could be in for a phase of bearishness. So I mentioned that right at the beginning because I think it's important to keep that at the back of our minds. Let's just zoom in here and have a look at what has been happening in the NASDAQ. And in my previous market update video, I spoke about the fact that price was coming down towards the 20-day cycle FLD. And what is usually expected in the sequence of interactions between price and the FLD is that at the first 20-day cycle trough, following a trough of at least 80-day magnitude, which of course this analysis assumes is what occurred, in about the middle of March, we would expect the 20-day cycle trough to form at about the time that the 20-day cycle FLD provides support. So I was discussing that in the previous market update video. As you can see, price dropped down below the 20-day cycle FLD. What does that mean? Well, it could mean various things. One of the things that it could mean is that the 20-day cycle trough has formed before. And in fact, you can see if we look at this analysis, the actual position for the 20-day cycle trough in this analysis is over there, well above the level of the 20-day FLD. And this 
price crossing down below the 20-day FLD is where price is moving down towards the 40-day cycle trough. The 40-day cycle trough nest of lows is still a little bit ahead of us, as you can see. There have been only 29 days since this trough in the middle of March. The average length of a 40-day cycle is 34 days, and so we should still have another 5 days to go until the 40-day cycle trough forms. However, the same principle applies in terms of interaction with the FLD. We would expect the 40-day cycle trough to form where the 40-day cycle FLD is providing support to the market. So this is a little bit worrying, the fact that price has dropped down below the 40-day cycle FLD. It could indeed form the 40-day cycle trough now because, of course, support provided by an FLD is often referred to by, by me as approximate support. Sometimes it's deadly accurate, but often it is approximate support. And so price has slipped a little bit below the FLD. If it bounces up again now, we would fairly confidently position the 40-day cycle trough beneath this low point over here or a lower price if it occurs today or within the next few days. But the fact that it has dropped below the support level of the 40-day cycle FLD is a fairly bearish sign. And so we're seeing some bearishness coming into the market. Should we be surprised by this? Well, this is why I started the video with a discussion of the fact that there might be bearishness coming our way. I do think it's very important to consider that. Generally speaking, however, following a trough of 18-month magnitude, we would not expect bearishness to happen quite so soon. And in a moment, we're going to be taking a look at cycle shapes in these markets, and I'm going to be discussing why we wouldn't expect it to happen quite so soon in the current situation. And so what else could be happening here? Well, one obvious thing that could be happening is that our positioning of this 18-month cycle trough might not, in fact, be correct. You can see that we have some other candidates. We had another candidate a week before that over here. I think that was the 8th of March. And here on the 24th of February, I think that was, this spike down was volatility that occurred. I think I'm correct in saying when the invasion of Ukraine happened on the 24th of February. And so that was a, a volatility spike or a spike of volatility because of um, unexpected news. Well, I don't know how unexpected it was, but because of the news that, that hit the world markets at that time, we had this sudden spike down. And so uh, any one of these three troughs could be potential troughs in terms of the analysis. Sentient Trader has simply positioned this trough beneath the lowest price trough, which more often than not is the correct position for it. But it is, is also possible that the trough should have occurred on the 8th of March, in which case it has been 36 days since that trough as of today, which means that the low price yesterday occurred 35 days after that trough. And so the formation of a 40-day cycle trough right now is very viable indeed. Of course, if the low price occurred here on the 24th of February, then this 40-day cycle would be running long at 47 days, which is particularly long. So there are some puzzles here. One of the things that uh, people have asked over the past week is what's happening. Prices slipped below the 20-day FLD. And I should point out that our expectation is that price will interact with an FLD in a particular way. When it fails to do so, that provides us with useful information. In particular, the useful information that it's providing us with here is that either some bearishness is coming into this market or that, in fact, price, when it crossed below the 20-day cycle FLD over here, was already on its way down to the 40-day cycle trough, therefore calling into question the exact position of this cycle trough over here, either at the end of February or in the middle of March. So that's what's happening in the NASDAQ. Let's take a look at the S&P 500 and speak about some cycle shapes.
So here is the longer term picture of one of the analyses we've been speaking about in the S&P 500. I'm showing you this simply because, as you can see, we have the very prominent trough of March 2020 phased as the long cycle trough. Again, there should be a little bit of a question mark surrounding that, as discussed when we looked at the Nasdaq. This is one of the analyses we've been considering, which is that an 18-month cycle trough formed over here at the beginning of October, which means that the recent trough, and I'm going to draw a circle around all of those three potential trough positions, the recent trough was a trough of only 20-week magnitude. So what does this mean? If this is the correct analysis, then we have witnessed one 20-week cycle trough. And I'm going to draw what I call a cycle shape over that 20-week cycle. We're going to speak in detail about that cycle shape in a moment. But it is a mixed and fairly bearish cycle shape. Now, the next 20-week cycle should be, because it's on the way down to this bigger magnitude cycle trough, the 40-week cycle trough over here, it should be a slightly less bullish or more bearish cycle shape. And so we are looking at a shape that is unlikely to be more bullish than the previous one and is probably going to be a little more bearish. So we're going to speak in some detail about that so that we can get some clarity around what we are really expecting. So this is one of the analyses, of course, that positions the 18-month cycle trough here at the beginning of October, the 20-week cycle trough here at the end of February or in early March. And here is the other analysis that we have also been discussing in the past few market updates, which positions the 18-month cycle trough here under the February or early March low price, which means that the October trough was of only 20-week magnitude. So as you can see here, we have the next 20-week cycle trough expected towards the end of July or perhaps the beginning of August. So let's get into a discussion of the cycle shapes. As I mentioned, when we were looking at the other analysis, the 20-week cycle that elapsed from October until the end of February has a shape, which is this shape over here. And that is a 20-week cycle shape. No matter which analysis is the correct one, we can all agree that that is a 20-week cycle that has elapsed between those two dates. We could argue the exact ending point, which we will do in a moment, but that is a 20-week cycle. And we can look at the cycle shape that has been formed, and we can consider the implications for the next 20-week cycle on the basis of the previous one. So let's do that. Let's zoom in and consider the cycle shapes. I've zoomed into the analysis we have just been discussing with the 18-month cycle trough over there. But the important thing is that we have a 20-week cycle which elapsed from this trough over here at the beginning of October to this trough here at the end of February. So what is a cycle shape? Well, in very simple terms, a 20-week cycle will influence price to move up from a trough towards a peak and I should avoid having the keyboard in the way of the mouse. There we go. And then it will influence price to move down from the peak all the way down to the trough over there. In very simple terms, that is, of course, a cycle shape. It moves price up and then it moves price down again. However, you will notice that within the up move and the down move, there are, in fact, three legs. This is what I call the zigzag shape that cycles tend to form in markets. Well, of course, the zigzag shape is not something that I came up with. Zigzag shapes um, have been identified in markets for many, many years. But in particular, there is a relationship between the zigzag shapes that form and the cycle analysis that we have on our charts. There isn't time in today's video to discuss the intricate details of that, but it certainly makes a very interesting and visual way of approaching your cycle analysis. That's the first zigzag shape, and this is the second zigzag shape. A few uh, little details about those zigzag shapes. You will notice that this first one is in fact an 80-day cycle zigzag shape because the primary cycle that is moving the price over that period of time to create that zigzag is in fact the 80-day cycle. There's the 80-day cycle trough, whereas the zigzag shape in the second part of the movement is in fact influenced by the 40-day cycle. 
length. So there's the 40-day cycle trough over there, and there's the trough in our zigzag shape. That's probably more detail than you need to know for the moment. But the really important thing about this is that we are then able to create a cycle shape for the 20-week cycle, looking at the details there of those uh, separate cycle shapes. So I'm going to change the size of my pen and the color, and I'm going to show you how we do this. Cycle shapes create M shapes in financial markets. And the way they do this is that we start from the trough of the 20-week cycle and we move up to the first peak of the 20-week cycle, which is the peak that occurs within the first 80-day cycle wave. That is that peak there. We then move down to the trough that forms at the 80-day cycle trough, which is actually over there. There's the 80-day cycle trough. Then we move up to the second peak, and then from the second peak, we move down to the trough of the 20-week cycle. That is, I hope you can see fairly clearly, an M shape that forms in the markets because of the 20-week cycle, and of course the shorter cycles than the 20-week cycle. The important thing is that there are two peaks, one, two. Two peaks in an M shape. Here is the first peak, and there is the second peak. So what's important about this cycle shape? Well, if we look at the cycle shape, we can speak about how bearish or how bullish it is. And this is fairly obviously a bearish shape for the very simple reason that it ends at a lower price than the price at which it started. Okay, it started over here and it dropped down to that level over there. It is therefore bearish because it ended at a lower level than the level at which it started. However, this is what is called a mixed cycle shape because there is a bullish aspect to it. A bearish cycle, or I should say a truly bearish cycle, will experience the highest peak at the first peak over there. Okay, but as you can see here, the highest peak in this cycle shape was at the second peak position. That is normally a sign of a bullish cycle shape. And certainly until the price level broke below the level at which the cycle shape started, we were considering the possibility that we had a bullish cycle shape on our hands. It turned nastily bearish. And I remind you again of what I said right at the beginning of today's market update video. There are possibilities as to why the markets might be turning bearish. Turning bearish is not something that happens overnight. It's something that we get clues to. And I'm trying to point out those clues because there have been a few signs that there is some bearishness coming into this market. It's not definitive yet, however, but we are beginning to see some signs. And the first one is this bearish shaped M shape for the 20 week cycle. So now what does that mean that we have a bearish M shape over here? Well, let's speak about a bearish M shape. And I'm going to quickly draw the bearish M shape for the 20-week cycle over there. Now, according to this analysis, we have an 18-month cycle trough over here at the end of February, whereas this was a 20-week cycle trough over here. It is therefore no surprise that this is a bearish-shaped cycle because the final 20-week cycle in an 18-month cycle must indeed be a bearish shaped cycle, or it should be a bearish shaped cycle. It doesn't have to be, of course, in a very bullish market, but it's no surprise to see it as a bearish shaped cycle. And the first 20 week cycle following an 18 month cycle trough should, of course, conversely be a bullish cycle. And a fairly good place to start is to simply expect some kind of symmetry. So we might expect some kind of symmetry in terms of the next 20 week cycle. Now, how did I draw that M shape into the future like that with so much confidence? Well, I didn't actually draw it very well, but there are some things that we know ahead of time. The first thing that we know is the central position of this M shape. And let me just actually erase that line and, and draw it a little more carefully. The first thing that we know is that the central part of the M shape should be timed with the 80-day cycle trough, which we can see, according to this analysis, is expected in about the middle of May. The next thing that we know is that the cycle shape, the 20-week cycle shape, will of course end at the next 20-week cycle trough. Here's the nest of lows for the next 20-week cycle trough, which is in about the end of July. 
And so we have those marker points. If this is the 18-month cycle trough that formed at the end of February, then we might expect as a, as a good starting point something that is fairly symmetrical to what we have seen preceding it. And then we would have a move down to this 80-day cycle trough over here. Then we would have a move up to our second peak. Would it be a higher peak? Well, it should be according to our logic because of the fact that this is an 18-month cycle trough. Because it's an 18-month cycle trough, we would expect to see a bullish cycle shape following it. However, as mentioned, before the 18-month cycle trough, we had a mixed cycle shape. We could also see a mixed cycle shape happening after that trough. Nothing is written in stone, but our expectation would be for this to be a bullish 20-week cycle. And then, of course, the uh, price will come down into this trough here in the middle of July to mark the end of the 20-week cycle. Now, a moment ago, I pointed out the the zigzag shapes that tend to form and I could point out here that if we draw the detail there for that move so far we have two legs of this zigzag which is potentially going to lead to a move up to this next peak over here. That is what would be expected under this scenario on the assumption that the 18-month cycle trough has formed over here. And that's a very important point. We are unable to resolve the puzzle of whether this is an 18-month cycle trough or a 20-week cycle trough, in my opinion, given the information that we have at the moment. And I know there are many discussions about it, and I've received many emails arguing both sides of the point, suggesting that this must be an 18-month cycle trough that formed here, or that this must be the 18-month cycle trough that formed here. There are equally strong arguments to each side. In my opinion, it's better to reserve judgment and understand what we expect on the basis of both of these analyses, and then see how price plays out so that we can uh, eventually resolve one way or the other. But at least we go into things with a full understanding of what both of these analyses imply. So I'd like to quickly display the composite model line on this analysis. And let's just zoom in here and take a look at how the composite model line can help us to understand the cycle shapes. So here is the 20 week cycle shape that we've been looking at, the previous one. And in the composite model line, there is that same shape. Remember, the composite model line takes the information of, in fact, I should have done that in a different color, so let me do that. The composite model line takes the information from the analysis and it uh, recombines it. And let me just find the right pen. There we go. So here is that cycle shape for the composite model line. And you can see that the composite model line is more bearish. Well, I hope you can see that. In particular, the first peak in the composite model line shape is higher than the second peak. In other words, that is a consistently bearish cycle shape. It has a much more bearish move, as you can see, with a stronger move down. And it has a higher first peak than the second peak. And so the Comsum model line is telling us that according to the cycle information contained in this analysis, we would have expected a more bearish cycle shape than actually elapsed. However, of course, the structure of the movement is very much the same. When the Comsum model line is moving up, as it is there and there, the price and the actual true cycle shape is also of course moving up and same thing with when the price when the composite model line is moving down price and the cycle shape um, determined by price is also of course moving down so let's now uh, move forward and consider what the composite model line tells us about what is expected next and this is where it gets a little interesting i'm going to have to change the scale uh, of the chart here and let's zoom all the way in there and take a look at this next 20 week cycle when i drew very roughly my cycle shape and let me change back to the standard yellow color that i use uh, when i drew that cycle shape i did something roughly like that 
and you can see a higher cycle trough and then that uh, moving down over there. So the composite model line matches that fairly closely as I think you can see. It's indicating that price is of course now coming down into the 40 day cycle trough. Then we're expecting price to bounce up into a higher peak and then it will come down into this 80 day cycle trough and then finally into the 20 week cycle trough after forming another yet higher peak. That is our expectation if this is the 18 month cycle trough that formed over here. Now what about the cycle shapes if that is not the 18 month cycle trough that formed recently? In order to understand those cycle shapes we'll take a look at the other analysis which has the 18 month cycle trough over here at the beginning of October. I think that's uh, the very first of October is it? And here is the 20 week cycle trough that formed at the end of February. I'm going to round off today's video with a very quick discussion of other possibilities in terms of that cycle trough. But for now we're considering the 24th of February as being the 20 week cycle trough. So what does this tell us about the cycle shapes? Well, of course, in simple terms, the 20 week cycle shape is absolutely unchanged because as I pointed out, and the whole reason for this discussion is the fact that no matter which of these analyses is correct, we do have a 20 week cycle that elapsed between the beginning of October and the end of February. I don't think there are many people that would disagree with that. And so the cycle shape doesn't change. But what does change is our expectation for the next cycle shape. Again, we have a midpoint for the cycle shape, which is the 80 day cycle trough over here in about the middle of May. And then we have the next cycle trough, the next 20 week cycle trough that will form and that will form. It's a little bit messy, but it will form in about the middle or towards the end of July. So that is unchanged. And so again, we are expecting the next 20 week cycle to elapse over that time frame and we are expecting an M shape to form. But here is the really important question. Is it going to be a more bullish or a less bullish shape than the previous one? The answer is, of course, it is expected to be less bullish or in fact more bearish because this was the first 20 week cycle following an 18 month cycle trough that formed the second 20 week cycle that forms must inevitably be more bearish. And if you don't understand that, I would encourage you to download the 10 core concepts of Hearst Cycles document that there will be a link to in the description below this video, which explains concepts about the multiple cycles and how they, uh, how their influence combines and so forth. Things like underlying trend and useful pieces of information like that. So our next M shape is expected to be less bullish or more bearish. What's the first thing that we can say about that? Well, a less bullish or more bearish M shape is likely to have a peak forming in the first 80 day cycle. Is it possible that this is the peak? It is possible. And so let's make that assumption. So that is therefore our first peak. It's not confirmed and it's not absolutely definite, but it is certainly possible. We are definitely going to get a bit of a bounce out of this 40 day cycle trough when it does form, but it might not form a higher peak. The important thing is that price is moving down according to this analysis into the 80 day cycle trough. I hope you can see that in both analyses, we are expecting an 80 day cycle trough to form at about the same time in the middle of May. But whether price first goes up and forms a new high price or a high peak, if you like, before it comes down into the 80 day cycle trough depends very much on the magnitude of this trough over here at the end of February, which we cannot yet determine. So we need to be on our toes watching out to see whether that is going to happen. Then price will undoubtedly bounce out of the 80 day cycle trough. Given the slightly more bearish scenario in this picture, would we expect a higher peak? No, we wouldn't because remember the second peak of the M shape would be lower in a bearish shaped cycle. And so we would expect a lower peak to form and then price would come down into a much lower trough in the middle of July. As I hope you can see, the structure of the move is the same. In other words, price is going to be moving up and then down at exactly the same time according to both analyses. The difference is how much more it will move up compared to how much it will move down. That's the really important difference that we're going to be keeping our eye on. Let's quickly take a look at the composite model line on this analysis. 
There is a composite model line that spans both of the 20 week cycles that we are discussing here. Let's quickly take a look at the one in the past. You can see that the composite model line, and I'm just going to draw the cycle shape of the composite model line here instead of the, the actual um, shape that formed. This composite model line was an entirely bullish cycle shape. You can see that the second peak is the higher peak, as was the case in terms of price. But another important difference is that the trough that formed over here was higher than the trough in the composite model line that formed in October. That is because the information in the cycle analysis is actually telling us to expect a bullish cycle to have formed here. I've discussed this, this anomaly that has developed, that if the 18-month cycle trough did form over here, then why have we seen a bearish cycle shape elapse in the first 20 weeks? And again, I will remind you of the comments I made right at the beginning of this video when we looked at the analysis of NASDAQ, which could explain why we are beginning to see some bearishness come into this market. Very important thing to bear in mind. So that is the difference with the previous 20 week cycle that has elapsed. According to this analysis, it was more bearish than would have been expected. Let's look at the next 20 week cycle. And as you can see, the composite model line has its peak over here, which is at this peak here. And the composite model line does not expect the second peak of the current 20 week cycle to be higher. Where is that peak? It's over there. Where is the 80 day cycle trough? It's over here in line with that nest of lows. And the next 20 week cycle trough is in line with that nest of lows. And so that is the M shape of the next 20 week cycle. Now I'm going to zoom in because I think it's really important that you understand the way in which these cycle shapes work. Notice how the composite model line has shifted relative to price. That's because the composite model line gives information about the cycles influencing the price over the time frame that we are viewing. It's a really important subtlety to the way in which the composite model line is presented on your chart. But in terms of us being able to use it to understand what to expect from this analysis, you can see that this composite model line indicates that the first move up in the current wave shape for the 20 week cycle is complete. And this is the peak and it is in place. Are we expecting a, 20, uh, a 40 day cycle trough to form in the markets? Here's the very staggered nest of lows for the 40 day cycle trough. Yes, we are. That's what that price bounce is there. It's not a very impressive price bounce, as you can see. It's a very disappointing price bounce, but we are nevertheless expecting a bounce out of the 40 day cycle trough. The important thing is that in terms of the M shape that is happening now, we are on our way down to this 80 day cycle trough expected in the middle of May. Then we will see a bounce out of that into the second peak, which according to this analysis will not be a higher peak. And then we are expecting a move down into the 40 week cycle trough or the, or the next 20 week cycle trough, which will of course be synchronous in about the middle or towards the end of July. I hope you can see how both of these analyses suggest the same structure to the movement. We are expecting price to bounce out of a 40 day cycle trough soon really soon. Then of course, it is going to move down into an 80 day cycle trough expected in the middle of May, then it will bounce up to another peak. And then it will move down into a trough in about the middle of July. The only difference has to do with the relative degree of upward movement compared to downward movement. How should you trade this? That depends on your time frame, the time frame of your trading. If you're looking at entering trades for only a few days, then you can catch each of these short moves. If you're looking at entering trades for several months, then of course you would want to wait until the uh, trough of a suitable magnitude has formed. You might want to wait until the 80 day cycle trough has formed and catch that move up there if that will give you a long enough move. Or you might wait until the 20 week cycle trough has formed and catch that move. Of course, if you are a short trader, then you would be looking for the first peak to form following the 40 day cycle trough to catch the move down into the 80 day cycle trough and so forth. So one final thing I would like to say in this video is that there is some discussion to be had around the actual position of this trough, whether it is a 20 week 
cycle trough or an 18 month cycle trough as mentioned when we were looking at the nasdaq the trough could be positioned below this price low here that is a spike bar that formed when the ukraine was invaded and volatility as a result of news is often not a very good place to position a price trough so there should certainly be a question mark around that we had a little bit of a spike trough over here. I think that was on the 15th of March. Can't remember exactly what happened there. Maybe there was a little bit of news or perhaps just a little bit of unexpected volatility in the markets. Uh, this here is a slightly more solid price trough in my opinion. And so it is possible actually to influence sentient trader to position the price trough there. I've done that in a separate analysis. Let's take a quick look. Here you can see the pin symbol to show that I have influenced this analysis in Sentient Trader. I've influenced it to position the 18 month cycle trough below that trough on the 8th of March, I think it was, as opposed to the 24th of February or the 15th of March. It makes a very small difference in the analysis. You can see instead of it being placed below this price low over here, it is placed over here. It stretches this cycle from the beginning of October. Some people might say it stretches it unacceptably uh, to 157, 158 days. I think it's 158 days. There we go, 158 days. That's an only a 16% variation of the 136 days that we expect as the average length of the 20-week cycle. It's not an unacceptably long cycle in my opinion, but there are analysts that would differ. And so it stretches that cycle a little bit longer. And it, when we take a look at our FLDs, you can see that price has come down, it's dropped below the 20-day FLD, as um, would have been expected if price was moving down to the 40-day cycle trough, which it certainly is according to this analysis, because here you can see that there have been 36 bars or 36 days since this trough in the 8th of March. Now, the average length of a 40-day cycle is 34 days. And so we are certainly in a very good position for this 40-day cycle trough to form, according to this analysis. Although, as you can see from this nest of lows, it might still lie a few days ahead of us because of the fact that that cycle has been running long recently in the analysis. Again, we would expect the 40-day cycle trough to form at about the level of the 40-day FLD. The fact that it has slipped below the level of that FLD over the past few days is a fairly bearish sign. And if this is indeed an 18-month cycle trough that formed, we would not expect that kind of bearishness so early in the cycle, which brings us back again in our discussion to the possibility that this is not an 18-month cycle trough that formed on the 8th of March, but in fact the 20-week cycle trough that formed. Everything that I have said in today's video about comparing the 20-week cycle shapes and so forth compares just as well or it, it applies equally to this particular analysis which simply shifts the position of this trough by a week or a, about 10 days or so. Let's quickly go through the interactions with the 20-day FLD which I was discussing in the previous market update video and we can use this analysis. Uh, the position of the FLD doesn't differ very much between the analyses. The reason for that is because the FLD is based on the recent cycle wavelength and the recent cycle wavelength is calculated over at least six waves of each cycle and so moving one cycle trough by a matter of a week or 10 days doesn't shift the the average wavelength very much at all as I think you can see I think the FLD is in pretty much exactly the same position here and so as discussed in the previous market update video the identification of the A category interaction was a fairly tricky one in that one we were looking at the trough being positioned over here and I was discussing the fact that that interaction with the 20-day FLD did not look very good as an A category interaction. It was all very messy and therefore this was probably a better A category interaction. In last week's video we were discussing the fact that the 20-day cycle trough would be expected to form 
and find support at about the level of the 20-day cycle FLD. So now the average length of a 20-day cycle is 17.1 days. And so according to this analysis, of course, that trough would have been expected to form um, about over here in the third week of March, is that? And of course, price didn't come down at all. Uh, it, it came down a little bit, perhaps uh, on this Wednesday over here, Wednesday the 23rd of March. But there is no clearly discernible 20-day cycle trough over there. As you can see, the analysis here has positioned that trough over here at 24 days, which is a very long 20-day cycle. But when price finally came down and interacted with or touched the 20-day cycle FLD, that was only over here. And so that was a good 27 days into the move or even longer if we had positioned the 20-week or 18-month cycle trough over here on the 24th of February. And so at that point, that interaction was really too late to consider it to be a potential 20-day cycle trough forming, in most people's opinion, I think. And so at that point, we expected it to cross below the 20-day FLD, at which point it generated a target to the downside, and you can see that target to the downside uh, was a little bit below. I think that target, if we calculate it exactly, was at 44.30. And it was a little bit below the 40-day cycle FLD, which does give one possible reason as to why price extended below the 40-day cycle FLD. In a perfect situation, that target of price crossing the 20-day FLD would have been at exactly the level of the 40-day FLD and so therefore price would achieve that target and find support at the level of the 40-day FLD. As mentioned, price has of course dropped a little below the 40-day FLD and it achieved its target for price crossing below the 20-day FLD, below the 40-day FLD. If that makes sense. I had to say FLD quite a lot there. So the B and C category interactions simply didn't occur. Okay, that's where price finds support at the level of the 20-day FLD. That does sometimes happen. There was a sudden burst of bullishness in the market at this point, but a volatility and the cycle uh, shapes were distorted a little bit there. And then when price crossed down below the 20-day FLD, that was our D category interaction. Next will be our E category interaction, which is expected when price bounces out of the 40-day cycle trough. We can take a very quick look at the composite model line. And here too, you can see that we had the expectation for a bearish cycle shape elapsing over there in the composite model line and our expectation i'm going to need to zoom out or let me just uh, actually slide the chart over a little bit so we can take a look at the cycle shape for the next 20 week cycle here it is it is a fairly good bullish cycle shape but again we have the 80 day cycle trough over here that's been slightly displaced towards the end of May, according to this analysis. And then we have the next 20-week cycle trough, which has been again displaced slightly to the right because of this recent change in the analysis towards about the middle of August or sometime in the first two weeks of August. And so that is a very long discussion of cycle shapes. I do hope that you found it interesting. The important point, in my opinion, is that every single analysis that we've looked at in today's market update tells us to expect the same thing, which is that the 40-day cycle trough is forming now. Price is going to bounce out of that 40-day cycle trough. How bullish that move is depends on the magnitude of this cycle, whether it occurred on the 8th of March or the 24th of February or the 15th of March. The magnitude of that cycle will determine the bullishness of the bounce out of the 40-day cycle. As I've said, I don't think it's possible based on the information we have so far to determine with absolute certainty what the magnitude of that cycle trough is. And even if it is an 18-month cycle trough, we are possibly 
beginning to see some bearish cracks beginning to appear so we need to stay on our toes but the important thing is that the structure of this move is likely to be the same no matter which analysis turns out to be true in other words a bit of a bounce out of the 40-day cycle trough bear in mind it could be a very disappointing bounce at some point we're going to get a peak forming it might be a higher peak or it might, as I demonstrated earlier, be a lower peak than the peak that we have already seen forming at the end of March. Following the formation of that peak, we are definitely going to get a move down into this 80-day cycle trough, which will occur either in about the middle of May or towards the end of May. Then, of course, we will see a bounce out. This analysis expects a higher peak to form, but the other analysis warns that that peak will not be a higher peak. Nevertheless, we will see price moving up into that peak. Then, of course, price will fall down into this trough, which in the one analysis is expected in about the middle to end of July, and in this analysis is expected more towards about the middle of August. So the structure of the moves is likely to be exactly the same, and we're going to watch those moves as they unfold, and as they do so, we can gain greater clarity in terms of the magnitude of the trough that has formed. I do hope that you found this market update useful and interesting. An extra long one today. I am not going to be recording a market update video next week. It is the Easter break here in Italy and uh, with any luck I'm going to be camping in the mountains of Umbria depending on the weather of course. So I won't be recording a market update next week but I will see you the week after that with another market update.